Hi, this is Astro Chris from Coda Queen Astrology, back for another segment of the Spiritually Awakened Mom, joined by Stacy and Crystal, who are my co-hosts. So let's get started. I'm here to talk about Venus Ingress Scorpio today. The ingression occurred on December 4th, 2023 at 10.51 a.m. And during that time, when Venus went into the sign of Scorpio, it was making an exact trine to Saturn in Pisces, which is amazing. Anytime Saturn is getting a trine, especially to a planet that it's friendly to, it's an amazing sign that the season is going to be stabilized. And when we talk about Venus in the sign of Scorpio, she's known not to enjoy this zodiac sign as much because of the intensity that this sign brings. However, she loves the sign of Pisces. So that trine allows her to also tap into a little bit of the Pisces archetype without actually transiting the sign. So the start of the ingression starts amazing. It perfects the trine a few like a few days later after the ingression. And then it heads to an opposition with Jupiter in the sign of Taurus, which also allows her to tap into her Taurian qualities. That is a sign that Venus naturally rules. Now, anytime we have the benefics, um, greater benefic Jupiter and lesser benefic Venus in an opposition, it's not necessarily a bad thing bad time because the benefics actually support each other even when it's a tough aspect but what can happen is that the matter or the situation could be overextended or over exaggerated or just something very expanded and then we have to kind of reel it back in it's like cake right everyone pretty much loves cake i mean i can say most of the people like cake i know there's always an exception to the rule but one slice ooh, we want another one but if we eat the whole cake we're gonna have a stomach ache we're not gonna feel that great so sometimes too much of a good thing is too much of a good thing so whenever we do have this aspect it kind of causes us to center ourselves a little more and um because at the same time when venus made this opposition to jupiter Saturn is also aspecting these planets, a sextile to Jupiter and a trine to Venus. So it brings a little bit of stabilization and a little bit more maturity to solve the issue or the problem or the matter. Now, let's focus on Venus in the sign of Scorpio. So when Venus ingresses the sign of Scorpio, this is her crescent state because she was in the sign of Libra, which is her home sign. And now she's moving away from that. She began a cycle in the sign of Libra and she's moving away from that archetype and then going into the second house from a house that she rules. And this is the value house for her in the perspective of how she relates and socializes to others. And it goes into joint money. It goes into topics of debt and mortgages and um, using other entities to attain or amass wealth. It's also connected to the deep spiritual and emotional bo bonding that we create when we open up intimately to another person. And because this is a podcast that's dedicated to the spiritually awakened mom or the spiritually awakened woman, we can then think about how this connection that Venus, you know, welcomes to join another person's energy and combine to be one we can then turn and look at our relationships. And this could be a married person, a single person. Um, it doesn't matter. It's whenever you have that deep connection with a partner that you love on a very intimate and sexual level, this can be the same connection. And it's a time to reflect on how healthy it is. 
I know one of the things that I hear from my clients the most is uh, the issue of having transparency between partners around the amount of money that they contribute, how they split bills, and also the money that they gross. So, you know, I've had plenty of clients and, you know, all of them come with different arrays and different circumstances around joint money. And it could be from not knowing how much the partner makes to knowing how much the partner makes and they're not pulling their weight, they're not contributing as much. So there's all sorts of things and issues that can come about um, from, you know, this joint resource, this, this place where the responsibility to amass wealth jo- like jointly as um, an operating unit as one can be affected by not having the correct values in place. And I wanted to speak just slightly about a recent client that I had where um, she had to leave her full-time job because um, motherhood became a little tougher. Her children ended up needing a little bit more attention that she than she can provide working a full-time job. However, she was not able to quit her job because the money that she earned is required so they can sustain the type of life that they wish to sustain at this time. And the plan is that eventually the partner can promote or, um, you know, start another venture or something like that. So they could, he could bring in the money that she's not bringing in. So they weighed all the options and that's what they came up with. However, once this started, now the partner is expecting her to do tasks and perform like if she is not working at all because now she's working less. He's thinking, oh, what are you doing with that time? Not understanding that this time is not necessarily leisure for her. This time was so she can go drive and pick up her children because there was no one else to pick them up. Um, So she can then, you know, take them to sports events and practice. So it's not like she is at the spa during this time or watching TV or, you know, hanging out with her girlfriends. No, she is actually still working, but not getting paid for it. So the issue was that she got fed up and she was contemplating returning back to work. And we explored this. We explored this for her and obviously I always empower my clients for them to come to a conclusion that really feels right to them. I can give them options, I can give suggestions, I can look into the upcoming transits and provide feedback and ideas. But ultimately, even if I tell you what to do, sometimes you're not going to do it. So I rather provide you possibilities And you choose with your free will what direction you're taking. So as I did that, um, I, you know, suggested a few things for her. And one of the things is that she needed to sit down with her partner and have a deep conversation on what is the whole goal that they have in being in a family together and raising children together. And I mean, this is not something people do. It's a very Virgo quality, very Virgo of me, Virgo moon to suggest this. But it is something that we need to sometime in the relationship visit and then determine what are we doing here? What's our goal? Is our goal just to raise kids and maybe later if we're not in love anymore, we part ways and divide assets? Or is our goal to be together even after that happens, after we're empty nesters and embrace the next stage in our life, do things together, travel together, or even eventually welcome a grandchild? Like, what is the goal? And yeah, things can change. People can fall out of love and all sorts of things can change. But I feel if you have a goal, if you're working 
mutually towards the same goal, it's easier for you to operate as one, even though you're individuals. It's easier for the energies to combine, even though you're individuals. And it's because the goal is there and everyone is on board. The goal is set. And yes, you can modify it. Yes, as time changes, maybe the goal changes, but you always have to come back and revisit this. And this actually spoke really, it spoke spoke to me in a way that I was like, wait a minute, I know what our goal was a few years ago, but my children are growing, everything's changing. So it's time to revisit that goal and maybe modify it and tweak it a little bit. Um, I feel like I'm still working. Both of us are still working towards it. But we do need to make some adjustments and modifications. And this is the time that you can do it when Venus is transiting Scorpio because it allows you, it gives you permission. It actually is in the air for you to discuss these deep topics, these taboo topics, these very intimate topics that a lot of us don't want to talk about. And then lastly, the last example I wanted to share was about a person that was just pretty much fed up. Her, She had a young child and an older child um, ended up having children about 14 years apart. And her oldest is about to graduate high school and she wants to throw in the towel. And her situation was very tough to hear because... It wasn't a 50-50 situation. A lot of the relationship, she was the one working and he was kind of laid back and not really, you know, contributing much. Very immature, um, matured somewhat throughout the relationship, but still not at her, you know, not at her rate. She's much more mature and she has a lot of regrets because they never had property they never had vacations um it was it's always been a struggle and this is one of her goals she says one of my goals is to be a property owner and i'm so heartbroken right now because the prices are so high and the mortgage which is a scorpio topic um the mortgage is so expensive and you know the cost of living is just so expensive but he's not contributing more. And I'm at this point where I'm like, well, what are we doing here? And it goes back to that goal. They have different goals. Um, I asked her, has he had a goal of ever owning property? And immediately she started crying during the consultation. And she's like, I'm sorry. And I said, no, don't apologize for that. Um, what's going on? And she said, as soon as you asked me that, I realized that he's never, ever mentioned anything about purchasing a property. I said, did you ever ask? She said, no. I would just say it when we buy a house, when we buy a house, and nothing. So I suppose that he had the same goal. And you asking me this, the way that you asked me, has he, does he have the same goal? Have, have he ever expressed wanting to purchase a house, she said, I realized that I was living in a dream, that my dream is not his dream. And that's why we haven't accomplished my dream. And then she said, but we've accomplished his dreams. He always wanted this big truck and she's like a big useless truck and he's got it. I've always wanted to have an SUV and I didn't get that. I got a van. So she started realizing that they had different goals. And yeah, this situation is much more painful. But I still suggest, you know, I'm not saying this person does not love her. I still suggest sit down and have this conversation. And after you have this conversation, then you can make an assumption or a conclusion in regard to how the conversation went. If this is something that you are able to work together, if you can create a goal where you can work together, or if it's really time to throw in the towel. So Venus 
in Scorpio season is a tough time when it comes to matters of the heart, but they're required because if we have the same goal, if we're working as one, if we're in unity, it's a beautiful thing. Sex can be beautiful, but sex can also be painful, right? Love can be beautiful, but there's also a thin line between love (laughs) and hate. One of my favorite songs growing up. My mom would play it all the time. (laughs) Um, Another thing when it comes to young women, Venus and Scorpio, this is time to do some shadow work. This is time to work with the soul. You can do great healing with this transit. And any love relationship that starts when Venus is in the sign of Scorpio always brings some amazing chemistry, some intensity, but can also reflect a karmic aspect that we need to work through if we get triggered with a new person. If we get triggered by the way they act or the things that they say or they remind us of a past person, you know, that person could be coming into your life so you can heal that. So you no longer are a mirror to that and are reflecting it out to the universe so you can attract that situation to it again. And the the reason that you're being conscious or you're being aware of it is because it's time for you to heal. Uh, lastly, I had a friend that reached out to me and I'm recording this a little bit after Venus. Um, Venus is already in Scorpio. Um, I recorded late, I, my apologies. But I had a friend that reached out to me and everything is going amazing with her. Everything is absolutely going amazing with her. And she said, I've been feeling off and weird. And as I sat in meditation... I got this epiphany that the reason I feel off and weird and that I needed to meditate more often is because I'm in peace and it feels strange. Mind you, my friend, she's a beautiful soul, but she's had her set of difficulties in her life. Um, She was born in a third world country. She immigrated to a new country here, the U.S. I met her when she moved here. And, you know, she had to learn a new language, new customs, everything. And she's had her share of broken hearts and um, difficulties, you know, even difficulties with her mother um, getting cancer. And she's luckily surviving that. But she just, right now, everything's going well. She's a software engineer she makes good money she's not in a relationship she is a single mother but she has everything under control right now she's not ready to date again but she was like there's nothing going on right now and it feels so awkward why this is what venus and scorpio can reveal to you that You need to be at peace with just feeling your emotions, with just feeling your heart. And there is nothing wrong with thinking that peace is awkward. I mean, eventually when you start the healing process and you heal all that, peace will not be awkward. Um, She's just a person that responds really well to crisis. And there's no need for her to attract another crisis. So she won't be at peace. And that's what she realized And I was just blown away because this is one of my friends that when I got really deep into astrology and I told her I was going to be an astrologer, she was supportive yet knew nothing about astrology, nothing about the spiritual world. Like um, she was atheist. So (laughs) she was such a good friend that she allowed me to talk her ear off and Even though at times I knew she wasn't listening because she just didn't understand the concepts or what I was saying were like over her head. She was very open to what I was saying. And right now she, she actually was born with a few planets in the sign of Scorpio. And right now she has Venus transiting those planets. So it's a gift. And she understood that. And I was just like loving the fact that she came at me with my language. Right. She's talking my language. And she's like, right now, Venus is transiting all my Scorpio planets. So she's here to share the love. And I was just like, I love it. 
So yeah, this is a time where you can reinvent yourself. You know, the archetype of Scorpio is to be reborn or to birth something. So anything that is birthed during this time is going to be deep. It's going to be very rooted to your principles and it's going to be very transformational. I want to wish all of you a Venus in Scorpio season that is full of healing and transformation and liberation. And here are some of my suggestions of the things that you can do during this transit. So I listed them for you. You can take a screenshot or, you know, tab this or maybe timestamp it below. And with that, I would like to invite my co-host Crystal to give you some information about the Venus and Scorpio journey through the eyes of the tarot. And after that, we're going to have Stacy guide us through an amazing self-hypnosis meditation. If you would like to get in contact with any of these women, beautiful, spiritually um, awakened women, go to the tab below and you can reach out to them. They're also on Instagram and you can also leave a message in the comments um, attempting to reach, reach out to them. They will be attentively watching those comments so they can answer any questions or suggestions you may have. Again, thank you so much and I'm looking forward to listening to the Venus and Scorpio tarot card spread. All right, my spiritual people, this is CC Crystal coming from the East Coast, and I have got your Venus and Scorpio tarot card reading. Um, this time what I did was I chose eight cards, being that the Scorpio is the eighth sign in the Zodiac, and each of the cards had a question, a theme, a Scorpionic theme, and a Venusian theme combined together to go over them. So let's go ahead and get started. The first one is, what is Scorpio's embrace? This card represents how you can best open yourself to the experience of deep emotional connections during this transit. And it suggests how to invite vulnerability, sensuality into your life. Now, when I pulled the cards, I got the Page of Swords in reverse. The Page of Swords in reverse is not usually the card that I would want to see when it asks me um, how to invite vulnerability or sensuality into my life because it's generally a sign of miscommunication in many forms. It could be argumentative, defensive, inflexible, um, and generally at the expense of being in a harmonious relationship. I feel like this is actually a great card though for this transit and being that the question at hand is how do I invite deep vulnerability and sensuality into my life? Well, what I would suggest is being clear in communication with yourself and your desires first and then let go of any defensive feelings of being scared of communicating these desires with your friends, your partner, your spouse, um, or in any relationship that is uh, that you're that you're sitting with right now. So, if you are, you know, wanting to finally design design that secret red room in your house, tell your man or your partner that you want your inner freak to come out in play or simply start having deep, intimate, intimate conversations with yourself about how your freak behaves, wants to be treated, and why she has not come out yet. But start by taking the fear and the defensiveness away from the beauty that is the dark feminine by being open to intimate conversations. Now, the second question is all about the Venusian lesson for this season. This card is going to reveal lessons in Venus in Scorpio that brings to your understanding of love and relationships, what you can learn about your own needs and desires. This one, I got a fool, the fool's card, upright. 
Now the full is symbolic of an air sign. I would say I feel like it's more of Gemini energy around this card. Um, but air signs are generally very curious signs. They generally have a pretty carefree demeanor and is always looking to do something new. And the fool is on a journey. With that being said, I sense that Venus in Scorpio is bringing us on a journey to the deep unknown. The unknown in ourselves as well as outside ourselves. Some may take a deep dive into what we truly desire in our lives and why we do not currently have it, along with a plan to manifest it. Scorpio's ruler is Mars, and this Mars is not warlike. It's a strateg strateg strategician. St strategician. I don't know why I can't say that word, but you guys understand what I'm saying. So with Venus there, she is going to plan to obtain not just her needs, but her desires as well. I imagine that some of you are going to be having conversations with your partners about these desires and how they can be introduced into your relationship. Um, maybe you guys start researching different types of relationship dynamics and or um, desires, conversations, meditating uh, with one in, with each other in opening up your relationships and at, in those areas. The third question is your transformational desires. This card highlights the areas of your sensuality that are undergoing the most significant transformation. What aspects of your sensuality are evolving? The Magician Upright is the card that I got. The magic within, of course, with the Magician. So I would assume that all of you guys are transforming your desires and evolving your sensuality by using magic and by using your magic as above, so below. With the Magician, it makes me feel like a lot of women will be taking charge by using the confidence in knowing who they truly are and feeling the magic of their sensuality, their feminine goddess, that even that deep dark goddess, um, just to play with and have fun. Goddesses of both the light and the dark. I feel like the magic will spark a fire to play with the control of alchemy, of using both of those energies of the of just your sensual, light, feminine garden, goddess and the dark feminine goddess. Now, the fourth question is the shadows of sensuality. Scorpio is about uncovering what is hidden. This card helps you understand any suppressed or unacknowledged desires that might be affecting your sensuality. Excuse me, I had to take a sip of my coffee. It is the wee hours of the morning over here on the West Coast. Um, anyhow, so back to the question. Number four, shadows of sensuality. So I pulled a seven of swords for the shadows of sensuality. And, you know, this card is supposed to help you understand any suppressed or unacknowledged desires in what might be affecting your sensuality. So the seven of swords, ladies, what is blocking your sensuality? Um, it is your swords, my dears. Let's put your swords down. Let's unblock your heart. Let's unblock your libido, your root chakra, definitely your sacral, sacral chakra. But man, put those swords down. The, what, what else could be blocking you but yourself? Blocking yourself from your magic, your femininity, your divine femininity, as well as divine knowledge and connection to Mother Earth. And with the magician that wants to come out and play, I mean, come on, who doesn't want to play with the magician? Um, but it's it's time to put away at least six of those swords. Maybe you use the seventh to fidget with while you're journaling or Googling dark feminine goddesses or talking about the idea of practicing 
um, tantric alchemy with your partner. Um, I don't think it's just one thing per se to pinpoint here that needs to be dropped, but just your whole wall around, around what you truly want to radiate inside and out is what this sword is this card is telling me. Just just drop your swords, girls. It, it's fun, you know. Just let it loose. Be wild. So the fifth card I got is the hanged man. And the question for that is what healing waters are coming your way? Scorpio is a water sign and water is healing. This card is going to offer insight into how you can heal from past sensual wounds and or disappointments. And with the hangman and the seven of swords that came out above, I would say again, it's ladies, it's ourselves that we are blocking. You know, you can't play like Venus in Scorpio only comes around once in a lifetime or maybe twice. With the hangman, we are blocking ourselves. We haven't been doing the work. We didn't deep dive last Venus and Scorpio se uh, session. We didn't take the opportunity in other Venus transits to go back and do some healing, do some diving into you know, what it is that we want in the different aspects. Um, and with that being said, there, you know, there has to be a time where you sit back and you release those past traumas and blockages. And you, yeah, I mean, you just really have to sit on it. I mean, no, no one on this earth is walking around free of any traumas, be it sexual, be it, um, relationship wounds, may trust issues, um, but now is the time to, to go through and heal that. So, yeah, yeah, I mean, we're, you're just blocking ourselves. You've got seven swords, drop the swords, and you're, you're just stalemate, ladies. So, let's use these transits that come around every year and start clearing our path. Stop being hung in the same type of relationship and or not receiving the same love or sexual or sensual connection with yourself and or your partner. Okay, now the sixth card in the sixth question is the power of attraction. This card reflects the unique magnetic pull that you have during this transit. How can you harness this power to attract what you desire? So I got the Three of Pentacles. The Three of Pentacles is all, all about embracing your learning, growth, and self-mastery. Ladies, your magnetic pull of this transit is your confidence in yourself and the growth that you have had over the years and that you plan to have in the future. How you lead your mastery with love for yourself and for others. So just, just keep embracing the path. We got the full, the path, embrace this path, this deep dive. We got the magician, embrace your inner magic. We got... You know, and then we got the seven swords, the hangman. I mean, we're, we're just stuck, you guys. So, and we've got our guards up, and now it's time to sit, sit in the work and embrace yourself in all of the growth and the mastery that you have already taken care of. And then do some more, and then be confident in that. Radiate that shit. Walk with your nose high. Be... Be one of them for a little bit. Like, your shit don't stink. It's fun. It's, it's fun. I mean, come on. And then the seventh question is in regards to intimate bonding. Venus in Scorpio is intense and intimate. So this card is going to suggest how you can deepen and improve intimacy within your relationship. 
and this one, I got the Knight of Swords. This tells me that the way to deepen the intimacy in your relationship is by being determined and taking risks in your relationship or with yourself. Maybe you've been secretly, again, hiding, um, hiding something, and maybe it's just deep, dark, red lipstick that, like, fixin type that stains your lips you know put put it on don't hide it anymore maybe she'll bring out that inner seductress but it's just not you know your normal style girl put the lipstick on with some heels a little higher than normal take a risk maybe walk up to the guy that you've seen sitting at you know, the train stop or across from you on the train and start a conversation. Or you're sitting at a restaurant and happen to notice, you know, a, a, a man, you know, your knight of swords sitting over there and you're thinking to yourself, man, I really want to go talk to him. Well, do it. Go be risky. You know, just don't, don't lay your inner freak out first. Just go and talk to him, you know. Maybe you're in a relationship and you guys want to start talking about reading tantra books together or going to a sex toy store and trying new things out. Or, you know, maybe the other person has just not reached their inner freak yet and, you know, you go to the sex store by yourself, you bring home books or you bring home a new vibrator. Who the fuck knows? But just go out there, take a risk. Take a risk with being sexy inside and out. The knight is waiting for his little lass to jump on that saddle and join his escapades. So the last and final question is the phoenix light. Like the mythical phoenix rising from ashes. This card represents the transformation and the rebirth of your sensual self. And what will emerge from this period of intense change. And ladies, 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 I got the Queen of Cups. Oh, but of course, the Queen of Cups is going to show up at the end of this transit. And after all of the hard work and the risks that we take, why would she not rise from the scorpionic darkness, the Queen of Cups? She has a vision of love, happiness, emotional security, loyalty, and deep intuitive connection to oneself, which then will allow you to have that deep intuitive connection within your relationship, current and or the future one that you want. I feel like there will be some deep internal changes that will create the momentum and the drive to manifest anything with ease going forward, especially in intimate relationships that can have a very sultry foundation that continues for a lifetime. So I just, ladies, I feel like all this is saying is that we've been stuck. We've had our guards up. We've had a lot of swords blocking our path. But the fool showed up in an upright position, wants you to start going within, start deep diving, maybe Google research, sexual positions, tantric alchemy, tantric astrology, you know, find, find that magic within, that sexual magic within, sit with your sacral chakra, your root chakra, you know, start looking up some divine feminine goddesses, but start going on that journey, that journey within, and then bring the within outside, and have fun with her, play with her, be sexy, be deep. Be the deep, deep, deep Venusian Scorpionic goddess. Be that bitch that walks into a bar in some hot heels, a sexy dress, or a tight outfit with some vibrant red lipstick and hair curled, sexy, with her nose in the air. Like, her shit don't stink. And walk that journey. This this season. I dare you guys to. I think it'll be fun. I want to hear about it. Who brought home sex toys? Who 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 went and picked up a a chair or a book? I don't know. I'd like to hear about it. You guys post about it. I think this could be a lot of fun. 
I hope you ladies enjoy this season. Thanks, Chris and Crystal. I put together a guided meditation uh, with affirmations. I wanted to pull everything together from the astrology and tarot and put it into action in our own minds as easily and effortlessly as possible. I know that is something that I want, easy and effortless. <laughs> uh, what better way to do that than with affirmations? You know, affirmations are a very powerful tool to help us change our outside environment by simply changing our inner beliefs. Because when we believe something inside, the universe works to match that frequency and send it back to us in our experiences. Now, if you practice these affirmations for 30 consecutive days or more, and just allow these thoughts to effortlessly rewire your brain to work for you and your highest purpose, you can practice these in front of a mirror, speaking directly to yourself, or close your eyes and imagine sitting across from yourself and repeat the affirmations while looking into your own eyes. If you would like to add ritual, candles, crystals, or whatever, I invite you to pause the recording and get set up. Get into a comfortable and quiet place. And as always, a reminder, do not listen to this while driving or operating heavy machinery. Venus is the planet of love, friendship, and finances. Scorpio rules intimacy, emotional depth, and regeneration. When we are out of balance in our life, we tend to experience the shadow side of the aspects. Lust instead of love, dominance instead of balance. We can become possessive or distrustful in our relationships. Venus in Scorpio seeks to uncover shadows and secrets so that we can transmute that energy to start working for us rather than against us. When we feel unsafe or insecure, when we do not trust ourselves, we stay in our survival mind and the energy we need for balance and growth is redirected to keeping us alive, thus keeping the illusion that we are not safe and secure alive in our subconscious mind. We revert to old, outdated subconscious programming that keeps us in lack and drains our energy so that no evolvement can happen. When we are thriving in our life, our heart is open, our mind is relaxed, and we are in a state of trust with ourselves. When we feel safe to be ourselves, and when we trust our instincts, and we know that we are worthy, growth and transformation happens automatically. Affirmations are powerful tools and with practice and repetition, you will release the old programming, releasing the chains of your past and transmute that energy to work for you. Attracting a life where you feel secure, free to be yourself, trust yourself, and create healthy connections and relationships with those around you. Remember, you are worthy of amazing things. To begin this change, we first create the desired environment internally. And this signals the universe to attract this environment to you in the physical.
I invite you to repeat each affirmation after me, allowing my voice to become yours. I am safe. I am stable. I am grounded. My body and my mind can relax. I can breathe deeply. I can let go of my intrusive thoughts and take time for myself. I am safe. I am safe to be myself. I am safe to live in this space and time. I am safe to let go of perceived expectations and just be myself. I am enough just the way I am. I am safe to speak my truth. Speaking my truth sets me free. Every day I show more of my true self. I chose to be born and to exist in this here and now. I am safe. I am free to be myself. I am secure in who I am. I am safe to follow my intuition. I trust myself. The universe is working with me and for me. I am surrounded by loving energy. I love myself. Taking care of myself first gives me the energy to take care of others. The world I create is a safe and loving place. I am surrounded by the loving energy of the universe. Because I trust myself, I attract trustworthy people to me. The people I attract support me and help me achieve my highest purpose. I am divinely guided toward my best life. I act on my internal voice of wisdom. I build deep, trusting connections with those who are close to me.
My intuition guides me to my highest purpose. I take responsibility for the life I have created. I am in control of my own actions and reactions. It is safe for me to express myself. I take care of myself so that I can take care of others. I am worthy of love. I am surrounded by love. It is safe for me to feel my emotions. It is safe for me to express my emotions. It is safe for me to love myself. It is safe for me to trust myself. Because I love myself, it is safe for me to love others. Because I trust myself, it is safe for me to trust others. Because I accept myself where I am in life, I can accept others where they are. I own my thoughts and my feelings. Because I am safe, I can face my fears. I am safe to make changes in my life. The world I create is full of love and trust. It is safe to express my passion in the world. The world I create is a safe and friendly environment. I am connected to this earth. The world around me aligns in harmony with my energy. I am enough just the way I am. I choose this life I lead. I love myself. I trust myself. I am worthy of love and affection from others. I am worthy of love from the universe. I am capable of achieving any goal I set my mind to. Because I love myself, I put myself first in my life. I am worthy of all the love that comes into my life. I chose to be born and to exist 
in this here and now. I am safe to live in this space and time. I act on my internal voice of wisdom. My intuition guides me to my highest purpose. I take responsibility for the life I have created. I am in control of my own actions and reactions. Because I am in control, I can face my fears. I am safe to make changes to better my life. I am secure with who I am. Because I know myself, I can trust the decisions I make for my life. I trust my intuition. I act on my inner wisdom. The world I create is a safe and loving place. I am surrounded by the loving energy of the universe. The people who I keep in my life are for my highest purpose. Because I trust myself, I attract trustworthy people to me. Because I love myself, I attract people who love me just for being me. Because I respect myself, I attract others that respect me. I am safe to be myself. I build deep, trusting connections with those who are close to me. I speak with love and kindness. I create a safe environment for myself and those who are in my life. I am safe. I am safe. I am safe. I am worthy. I am worthy. I am worthy. I am loved. I am loved. I am loved. I remember to remember to take time for myself. And now locking that door to your subconscious, sealing in all these positive words into your mind replacing any beliefs that do not agree. These old beliefs will be vented out through your early morning dreams. Remember, 
practicing these affirmations for 30 consecutive days or more and allowing these thoughts to effortlessly rewire your brain to work for you and your highest purpose. Thank you.